Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about methods in Ruby. Now, a method is basically just a block of code that we can write, which will perform a specific task for us. A lot of times in Ruby, you're going to have different groups of code, different groupings of code. They're going to perform specific tasks or they're going to do certain things. And what we can do in Ruby is we can take all of that code that's you know designed to perform one task, we can put it inside something called a method. And what's cool about methods is you can actually call them from other places inside your program. And we can give methods information and then they can give us information back. So in this tutorial, I'm just gonna to talk to you guys about the basics of using methods. We're gonna write a method and we're gonna look at how they can be useful. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a method. And our method is going to be very simple. All it's going to do is say hi to the user. So our method is going to perform one task. It has one goal and it's going to say hi to the user. So down here, I'm going to create my method. The first thing we always want to do when we create a method is type out DEF. And this basically means that we're defining a method. Second thing we want to do is give our method a name. So generally you want to give your methods descriptive names so it's very obvious what task they're performing. In our case, our method is saying hi to someone so we can just call it say hi, just like that. And now what I want to do is hit enter and I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to type end. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm defining a method block and anything that's in between def and end is going to be inside of our method. A lot of times people will indent here just to show that the code is like inside the method. So in here, again, we have one goal. We want to say hi. So I'm just going to type puts and I'll just say hello user. Cool. So now I'm going to run my program and we'll see if this method works. So I'm just going to run the program. But you'll notice over here when I run the program, nothing's showing up. And that's because when we define a method, the code inside of the method is only going to get executed when we call it. So in other words, if we want to execute the code inside this method, we have to call the method. That basically just means we have to say like, Hey method, go do your stuff, go perform your task. So I can come down here and the way I call this method is just by typing out its name. So I can type out, say hi. And now Ruby is going to execute this method up here. So you can see over here we have hello user. So everything's working. And I just want to show you guys one thing. So if I typed out like top up here and then typed out bottom over here, I want to show you guys the flow of these methods inside of our program. So now when I run this program, you'll see we're printing out top, hello user, and then bottom. Essentially what's happening is Ruby is looking at this line of code. It's executing it. Then it sees say hi. So it knows, okay, the user wants me to execute the say hi method. So Ruby's going to jump up. It's going to execute all of the code inside of this say hi method. And then once it's done executing all of that code, it's going to jump down back down here and it's going to print out bottom. And I just want to point out, you could put as many lines of code inside of one of these methods as you want. Obviously this is like a simple method. So we're just keeping it simple, but that's the basic execution flow of functions or methods. And actually this brings me to a good point. A lot of times these are called methods, but you'll also hear people calling these functions. Essentially in the case of Ruby, these words are basically interchangeable, basically means the same thing, but for the most part in Ruby, we're referring to them as methods. All right. So let me show you guys some more cool stuff we can do. One thing we can do is we can actually give these methods some information. So I can actually take this say hi method and I could actually allow the user to tell it who to say hi to. And the way that I'm going to do that is after I type the name of the method, say hi, I'm going to make an open and close parentheses. And over here, I just want to specify what's called a parameter. And a parameter is basically a value that whoever is calling this method is going to give to it. So this method can actually accept inputs. It can accept parameters as input. So over here, I can just type out the name of the parameter I want to accept. So in our case, we'll just call this name because it's going to be the name of who we want to say hi to. And then down here, instead of saying hello user, I can say hello name. And you'll see in a second, this is going to use whatever variable or whatever piece of information gets passed into this method. So down here, if I want to give this a name, I can make an open and close parentheses. And in here I could type a name. So I could say Mike. So now when we run our program, it's going to say, hello, Mike. 
Essentially what's happening is the say hi method is specifying that you can give it a name. And down here, I can, when I call the method, I can give it that piece of information. You can also give these things multiple pieces of information. So I could also specify age. And then down here, we can incorporate that into our print statement. So I could say, hello, name, you are, and now we'll print out their age. So I can just say age. And essentially, this will take in two parameters, and it'll print them both out over there. So down here, I can just specify the first parameter, Mike, and then I can specify the age. So we could say like, you know, 73 or something. And now it's going to say, hello, Mike, you are 73. And actually, you'll see we're getting an error over here. And this is actually a uh, good little catch. So age, I'm actually passing in an integer. And whenever we want to print out an integer inside of a print statement like this with strings, we always have to say age dot two underscore s. So that's why we were getting that error. And that's something that you always want to watch out for in Ruby. So now when we run our program, it says, hello, Mike, you are 73. So that's pretty cool. We can pass this two pieces of information. But let's say that I didn't want to pass this an age, right? Maybe I didn't know how old Mike was, so I didn't want to give it an age. Well, now when, we're, when we run our program, you'll see that we're getting an error, right? So because I didn't include an age when I called this, it's throwing an error. One way we can mitigate this in Ruby is we can actually give these variables default values. We can give these parameters default values. So I could come over here and say name is equal to no name. And we can just say age is equal to negative one. And essentially what's going to happen now is if I don't include an age in here, it's just going to print out the default. So it says, hello, Mike, you are negative one, right? If I wasn't including the name in here, it's just gonna use both of those default values. So you'll see I'm not passing any parameters. And now it basically just says, hello, no name, you are negative one. So sometimes specifying default values can be a good way to control these methods. And really it depends. So in some methods, you're gonna want whoever's calling them to give you certain pieces of information. But if those pieces of information are like optional, you can just give them default values like that. So that's the basics of working with methods. And there's actually one more thing we can talk about. And I'm going to talk about it in the next video. It's something called return types. Basically, we can give the method information and the method can give us information back. But for now, this is just the basics. And I hope you guys learned something about methods. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.